Welcome back, Redeemers. Thank you for joining us again. My name is Curtis. What's up, Stays? I'm Nick. And today, um, I wanted to put Nick on to something special as far as uh, Stray Kids Gone Away, which is a subunit song with Han, Sung Min, and I N. Um, and the reason I, I was kind of bringing that up is to say, you see, we had checked out Red Lights with Chan and Hyun Jin, right? <laughs> we, had also, shit. we had also Surf. checked out Surf mm -hmm. or whatever with um, Chang Bin, Felix, mm -hmm. and Lee No, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the, the rest of the group from when they each went off and did those respective projects. I got you. Something was called uh, like Camp uh, with Howling or something like that, which basically mm -hmm. was kind of almost like a little weekend or sort of day or two kind of getaway where each of the subunits mm -hmm. kind of paired up and they, they had like a little thing. So they kind of went away and made a song basically. So it's just, you're getting a little mm -hmm. sense of kind of the time, but this is the one song that we haven't, you know, checked out with regards to kind of those things. Mm -hmm. So I thought it'd be a nice way to kind of, you know, at least tie that together and perhaps get a little bit more. I know you say Han is your bias, but then also get a little bit more of kind of you know, some of the other members as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I thought this would be a nice little treat. So. This is going to be interesting because uh, red lights and surf up are kind of like no, exactly. very high. So That's it's exactly why. So, you know, they two for two already. And, with, they, and in that behind the scenes, they do making ofs and you kind of see them putting it together to arrange it. So it's all really interesting stuff. But, you know, this would be the last of kind of that trilogy, so to speak. So cool. without ready. further ado, I'm ready. let's see what we got. Oh, you can hear it in the background. We were playing it. Uh, it sounded like it was surfing in the background. Be a nice little montage. <laughs> We got some pressure in there. Set up punch right here. Yeah, waiting for that to open up.
<laughs> nah, that's real shit. <laughs> like, that's powerful, man. <laughs> uh, definitely three for three. Um, and it's crazy too because I'm uh, I'm I'm not the big ballad guy. Um, when it comes like to music and shit, but um, this was powerful. Um, like very, very, very powerful. But I, I also want to say like all three of y'all are over the girls y'all were even going after. Like fuck them. Uh, <laughs> respectfully, uh, <laughs> yeah, nah, like real shit. Like, like I fucking put the blanket on you. Go fucking give kudos to fucking bro. Um, <laughs> like I hate shit like that. <laughs> but I get it. Cinematic purposes and shit. Uh, like the it kind of had to end on on that note. Um, and they probably gonna learn from this as men. Um, but yeah, with that being said, um, so this is. A st- a vocal exercise um, from a talent standpoint from what I'm gathering um, just basically because um, even the punch that came later on with the ballad you're kind of used to it opening up uh, like on the third part some type of key change or something else mm-hmm. not like it felt off tempo but it was like the way the, the way it was distributed was just like alright where's it coming from ah! <laughs> like, like, oh. like he was just like, oh shit! Like he's behind me. Um, I liked it, and I also heard the layering. Yeah. Um, you could see like it was stacked. Even uh, I think when Han first started the rapping, uh, like on there kind of throws you off just because it the was way late in the song. It wasn't yeah, like, you know, early it's, on. So it's like you're kind of allured into that sense of the the ballad and the emotion behind it. So mm-hmm. then when the rap comes in, it, it adds a little bit more of a punch to it. Yeah, and and I felt like it worked so well because like you said, if it would have been kind of one of those things where like the the chorus comes on or something, and then you get into your rap it's like oh, okay cool we're doing a little bit of a switch of a flow yeah. you kind of had your ebb and flow of the whole song and then it just yeah. flipped exactly and, and that's it what works I like within the respect of the arrangement of this too is mm-hmm. to say um and this is uh with respect to three racha being uh chan uh chang bin and then han mm-hmm. uh for the teams as far as who got broken up with who and then kind of how they went about that they put each of the members of three racha with the those who they separated three racha yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. so basically mm-hmm. all that to say is like this was a great experience and within all those you know songs respectively is to say that you got a sense of kind of how that particular person wants to attack a song mm-hmm. or rather if they choose to kind of either sit back and like you know what do you guys like or what mm-hmm. so you got so much more of the process and the reason i'm bringing that up is because this was um you know a couple of years ago if i'm not mistaken at least of course um but the reason i'm bringing that up is to say when we get into some of the subunit songs currently um, as far as like, you know, um, on Ordinary particularly, mm-hmm. and then in Maxident, uh, which we had seen as far as the subunit songs, mm-hmm. you're, this is almost like one of those seeds of kind of like them experimenting and you seeing them kind of, you know, some of the members who aren't members of Three Racha uh, with, you know, respectively, mm-hmm. um, to say as far as what they kind of w- wish to choose. So the reason I'm bringing that up is to, to piggyback off your point as far as um, the arrangement of when the rap verse came in felt very unique in relation to kind of song structure. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of what I was saying. It's just, so you feel so much of a uniqueness within that. And this is like kind of just, you know, one of those examples of that. Yeah, no, nah, it just, and, and it works. Um, and like you said, unique is a good way of putting it because I guess, I guess when we go off of uh, like just strong, sh- strong sh- song structure and how mm-hmm. songs are supposed to be displayed as far as like, you know, uh, verse pre-chorus chorus verse pre-chorus chorus verse like pre-chorus bri- yeah. maybe a bridge yeah. and that bridge uh be honestly the bridge for the key change just so you can put the last uh like pre-chorus or hook into like a bigger octave exactly. um and they did th- they did it but it just was constructed so differently and unique and in a good way to where it, it wasn't just a boring ballad um kind of in layman's terms to put it that way yeah. Um, but I just I thought that was unique and I thought that was decent and I thought the skills were utilized perfectly um, because uh, some someone else jumped in and rapped after Han because that wasn't on Han I feel like, okay all right then it was on him and the shit is and he's a vocalist and, and these are kind of rare exhibits within that regard mm-hmm. so you're like oh my gosh you know like but it's 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 good because like you said I'm um, I'm glad you gave the little tidbit of that because it just that lets you know that this was a time of uh, really experimentation um, as far as, especially if you're taking like essentially three writers, yeah. uh, splitting them up with uh, like the other members and then kind of reading the room, just like, you know, all right, I'm a write or you know what, y'all write and I'll help mm-hmm. and we'll kind of go from there. And the utilization of like voices, where as opposed to being like all the members now, if it's two or three, y'all just like, well, how do you want to approach this? Should we both sing? Should exactly. we rap? Like, and then you, 
honestly really got three totally different songs. Exactly. It, honestly, <laughs> it, was, it was like a party song, a kind of sexy like type song, mm -hmm. and then it was you know a, a straight a ballad. straight ballad. And it, I don't even believe, at least to my recollection of it, that that was that purely that was planned. intentional. Mm -hmm. um, it was really just to show, and it was like a like almost like um like you know how like. I guess just the first metaphor that my mind goes to is uh, with directing as far as like those unplanned moments in film. Mm -hmm. it, it just kind of felt like that, at least to my recollection of it, if I'm not mistaken. But all that to say, yeah, like seems, seems really too perfect, three completely honestly. different tracks. Yeah, it seems um, too perfect that they all just came back to the table. It was like, what you got? It was like, what you got? Yeah. It was like, don't worry, we'll show you when we're it's, done. It's like, damn, that, I, there actually is a lot of playing around with that, with mm. stuff like that too. But they all just kind of went off and did their own thing uh, with each of the members of Three Racha. I heard uh, when other, when the other people, when the other members play like their respective songs, some of the other members be salty and shit, and just be looking <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, dang, like, I could have been on there. <laughs> yeah, you, you Respectfully. Saved, you should have saved that. could have saved that as a group joint. <laughs> <laughs> Cheated. Content, content too good. <laughs> nah, but um, yeah. they, all, all in all, like, like, the unique changes uh, I, I thought were not necessary, but done and made this unique. This didn't come across as kind of like a straight ballad. It came across as a straight kids ballad, if that makes sense. Like this was no, unique no. in their own. And it's kind of what straight kids is, in my opinion. They just, um, whenever the K world seems to be going left, they go right. They uh, march at their own band and kind of just do things that may seem obscure, but they, it works for music. And I've I've never seen this approach kind of with with the ballad with the way mm -hmm. they had it structured and everything and it worked and I also fuck with the video and everything like I said if Con pissed me off at the end definitely <laughs> right? got teary eyed a little because I felt like she like people was playing with, with my guys and shit but really? this is a good joint you put me on though and and definitely. and I wouldn't uh, and it's funny too because with the way I like download and do the music and shit is if we listen to it as downloaded, but I can't listen to anything else kind of on the albums. Yeah. So I didn't even know they had like a three peat to this as far as like, well, they did, the, they the did that, they did that and shit. Connected. And they're um, three totally different sounding songs yeah. where like, I want to know is that a recurring theme that have they done it again? Then where it's just like, well, we're going to resplit up again and shit. Um, well, they've also done variety content called um, Two Kids Song, which is mm -hmm. basically they've done Two Kids Room where people interview and kind of they integrate it some mm -hmm. ways in which members will talk and kind of it's just basically to get more one on one of each individual members, their dynamic. It can be funny, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But all that to say in one of the things that they switched up, they did Two Kids Song, which is basically like kind of that drawing from a hat. You all get the same sample um, <laughs> of the beat, which is you know always really funny. But then you kind of are paired again with a different member and and basically you either and you, you get to, you know, work with a member of Three Rachas separately. And that mm -hmm. was one of the earlier seeds of this, if I'm not mistaken. I believe mm -hmm. that came before this. But just all that to say, and you get to see which each member is able to kind of bring more uniquely to that. And mm -hmm. kind of how they work. And just honestly, really, them creating music. Um, and that's something that's always stood out to me for sure. Um, and I think it was well exuded uh, within here, too. Yeah, yeah. nah, I, I, I like this a lot. Um I, I would download this, and I don't typically get into like these ballads, but they made it unique and decent enough for uh, for me to kind of want to get into it. And also, really, it really was the vocals um, for me, like the rapping and everything, definitely uh, spins you on your head and kind of br brought you in a different direction. But they yeah. really they took turns fucking this beat up, honestly. No, nah, honestly, and that's uh, one thing I definitely want to respect them on too. Is like I, I really love and respect their rap lines so much, but I, I feel like their vocals are so slept on in a lot of regards, and it just be like these little like gems that are almost just hidden in, in, a, in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. um, and not to say with respect to views and the fandom and, and stuff like that, because um, those things are certainly you know shown. But it's just like there's a lot of like hidden gems like that where it's like you know. You get to really zero in kind of on some of the vocals, uh, but not lose sight of, you know, other intricacies within that um, throughout. And just uh, one thing in general, like I'm not going to touch on this in relation to some of the behind the scenes things, but the, the members also had a lot of kind of heart to heart sort of moments as far as, uh, you know, those kind of sit down by the campfire type, you know, moments that we've kind of come to see in, in certain regards. Uh, so there's a lot of appreciation and things that kind of even make the sediment of what's in the vocals themselves kind of hit almost a little bit more. Um, and Han having to take on the role of the rapper, but then also, you know, you get to see Ian rap as well and him being the, the Machne. And honestly, I feel like, you know, because his voice is so distinct and unique as well. Um, and, and he had like a lot of kind of confidence issues as far as his voice or kind of, you know, just feeling, you know, I mean, that perfectionist kind of mentality. Or anything, I can't tell now. You know, and it's just all that to say. It's just when you really like you're seeing him, you know, shine and everything. And I'm not necessarily going to make this about that or anything like that, but. We know Han is an incredible vocalist. Mm -hmm. We know Chan is an incredible vocalist. We've heard 
Um, we've heard Lee No, of course, and I know on mm -hmm. uh, Red Lights we've heard Hyun Jin. Um, and certainly there's a lot of moments, especially in like uh, like the Winter Falls and stuff, you hear Chang Bin, even if like, you, you know, so all that to say his voice is incredible as well. But all that to say is technically the vocal subunit is Ayan and Sung Min. Uh, so basically they might be some, some of the people who, you know, are really sneakily there. Like I know we've said with the layering of kind of Chan and, uh, you know, Sung Min and some of the pre-core stuff. As far as like we mentioned, like, you know, uh, God's Menu and I believe Maniac a couple times and just, you know, uh, certain tracks just to, to kind of emphasize that. But all that to say, um, when you really hear them kind of, you know, shoulder to load, like it's like you, you really get the sense of like just how powerful uh, their vocals are. It, it's, it's honestly incredible. Um, and I do really like the video and, and they keep it really kind of simple in the, in the aspect of like, you know, just kind of liking someone from afar, that sort of thing. And then basically it kind of happened to get to that point where it's like, OK. I have to accept that this person is no longer either going to be there for me or anything like that, or, or just mm -hmm. that uh, loss of innocence of not to say a first love or anything, but just the, the hints of that potential of what could become a first love. I just think it was a unique angle to kind of approach things for. Um, and they're definitely like a little bit older as far as like, uh, you know, pulling off some of the school kind of outfits and things like that. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a it's a nice, unique touch. And it's just a, a very relatable kind of innocent, you know, type of song. So I, I think the way they structured it is really cool. And, and just to, the last thing I was really going to say is just to, um, to say um, when they do give kind of, you know, because uh, Sung Min had to take over a lot of the, the heavy lifting of the vocals too. Not that like on that type of level, because obviously like there's tons of vocal talent within the group, mm -hmm. all of them. Uh, but basically, uh, when Wu Jin was in the group, he was considered the lead vocalist, and he was also, um, you know, among one of the eldest, if not the eldest, if I'm not mistaken. I don't mm -hmm. want to, you know, misquote that or anything. Uh, but all that to say, essentially, when, you know, that unfortunate situation happened, technically the lead vocalist was, you know, Sung Min, and him and I N are the two maknes of the group, they're the two youngest. So all that to say, it's like you really see them grow and come into their own, and, and this is kind of one of those moments where it's like a a step out center stage uh, sort of display of, of their vocals. And I just think it was a really powerful moment, um, both within that, but then also within the subunit writing. Because uh, then, like, as we said, you know, when we get to Maxit and, and, and you know, Audinary, you kind of see a little bit more of the subunit explorations of songs. Um, so they, they really just snap on this. And it, it's, it's like a perfect ballad to me, to be quite honest. Nah, I'm with you. Like, and this is a good joint, man. So I'm, I'm cool. Anything else you want to add? You good, bro? <laughs> no, I just, I was honestly shocked that it would uh, resonate with you as much um, as it had. Like, I more so wanted to kind of tie in that trilogy of kind of the vastness of the difference mm -hmm. of kind of the song arrangements and everything that they had within that. But uh, like, you know, certainly the that, that was that was special. No, nah, <laughs> no, nah, it is, and it was, it's gonna be a, definitely a song that's gonna be stuck with me too, just because of how it ain't gone you explained it. It's not. <laughs> Um, and the, M yeah, the MV is the MV made it stay. Yeah. So, nah, I still, I'm still mad at those girls. <laughs> like, do they not know? Shit, these are straight kids, man. You gotta get it right, man. You gotta know. Like, <laughs> the bulls they picked ain't even gonna be in other videos after this. Say, <laughs> so, nah, they're just black ball actors. <laughs> like, I'm just acting. You said, nah, I went too far. I feel away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that melody. This is ordinary. <laughs> no, also, the, uh, last thing I wanted to say, I completely forgot. They had a little bit of electric guitar at the end too, which is one of the kind of the yeah. rare instruments and everything. Like, and I think that was also something that you know added a little bit of specialty to it as well. But so, yeah, if they snuck yeah. the vocals in the production, definitely uh, like changed up. That was added, and it felt like something else might have been added in because it got grand, and then it yeah. turned into like it turned into like whoa, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it didn't. <laughs> But yeah, I'm good, man. Jump in the comments. Nah, tell us how y'all felt about this, man. This was fire to me, man. I I still want to hear more just because I still I feel like I'm missing stuff off the album still. Yeah, um, yeah man. No long talk. We love y'all. We're going to holler at y'all. Peace. Take care.